so today we're going to be starting the six cylinder for the 292. This is just kind of an overview of what I'm going to be doing to this head and the kind of the parts that I bought for it. If you look it up on 12bolt.com, the guy, talk to him a little bit on the phone. Really smart guy. He knows these motors. He's done everything to them. He's got some stuff on YouTube. But I figured I'd probably help him out, kind of giving him uh, another video on YouTube, not just his own, but someone else who's putting his stuff in Chevy's. So really smart guy. He's got some great parts here. First big thing is bigger valves. Engines and air pump, right? So more air means more fuel, more fuel, more bang power. So on, so on. Here's what we're going to be doing. This is the original valve. This is the new valve we're getting. I already got them here. And depending on how clear it is in the camera, 200 thousands bigger. So this is a one and three quarter. This measures one and uh, 1.94. So just over uh, 15 sixteenths, right? Yeah, something like that. Anyways, 200 thousands bigger. Huge difference. And if you look at it right here, he's kind of got it ground so that it, the air flows smoother and, and it's just a nice, really smooth transition. And then the shaft itself of the valve is really, is a little more narrow to give more airflow. Same on the exhaust valve. We're going from a 1.5 to a 1.6, and he did the same thing here where he ground the neck of the valve down to make more airflow, and it's smoother. Kit also came with a bunch of valve guides, 12 of those, new um, uh, valve seals, because these are these. these are false guides in the head itself, so putting these in, it's gonna change things. So different valve seal to go on there. Came with exhaust seats, so we're going to be changing out those seats, putting in new ones to take up. These seats are old, so that they're not hardened to meet with the new fuel requirements that we've had since the 70s. So it's coming with new seats. Also new, um, well, new valve train stuff. So it's got dual spring, two row springs. I don't know what you want to call them. I'm sure there's a fancy name for it, but you got a spring inside a spring. So we got a set of those. $250 for this whole kit. Pretty good. I was thinking about buying it piece by piece and modifying it myself, but for $250, you can't really beat that. And what else did it come with? Yeah, so the exhaust seat. So what he didn't include in the kit, and I bought myself some new intake seats. I'm not sure why it didn't come with that. But here's the part number. If you end up doing it yourself, you can put this in. Uh, SB2000-1. It's just a, no, your normal 2.0055 intake seat. And that's what we're, we got for a valve train. And there's going to be more stuff that's bolted on to it. Once we start assembling the motor, we'll get there eventually. I'm um, just going to head modifications. We will be doing some head exhaust and intake porting. We've also got a bolt-in lump kit. It comes with all the stuff uh, a couple of lumps to put into the intake port the idea is that we'll be knocking out this where the the head bolt goes in through the top of the head into here and putting in this lump doing that because in here in the uh, in the intake it has a really sharp corner so this in theory creates a nice nicer flow for the air less resistance and then this is a false well it just it 
blocks a lot of airflow. So everything we're doing is to create more airflow. So that's kind of what we're doing today. I'm gonna put this in the mill, knock these out today. We'll see how far I get into it. I started the, I did the middle one already because I didn't want to practice on what I'm showing you guys because I don't know what I'm doing. So we're gonna do the next one. Some people use a sawzall, but I'm fortunate enough to have a, a milling machine, so that makes it real easy to do. So it's just pass after pass. And again, I have a fan running, blowing the dust away, because cast iron just makes you feel sick. chopping away at this and I'm at a 400 depth we're gonna go five I'm taking hundred thousands passes that looks like that that I pull out so yeah you can use the sauce all to do this and then use a die grinder but I got a milling machine so that makes it real easy a better view of what I'm doing. So I'm just using a 3 8 bit going back and forth slowly chipping away at the edges. Luckily with cast iron it's pretty easy to machine, it's just messy. Normally I'll blow my chips away with uh, compressed air, but it's just messy. But it, it stays cool, it cuts easy. There's a lot good about machining with cast iron.
bandages back and forth until that falls out. And this is going to be the last pass, and then that thing is going to fall right out. Just like that. So now it's really open in there. A lot more breathability. And the idea is now you can fit this lump. It doesn't quite fit in there yet. I haven't clearanced it much. But this fits right inside there. And the idea of that is the airflow goes in and it's a little smoother in the transition on the intake valves. So yeah, kind of cool little stuff. We're getting there. It's a lot of work. Hard parts done. Got that all cut out. So there's no more stick in there. So now this lump I went backwards. Fits right in. There we go. So all I've got left to do is a little bit of trimming up here. There's a sharp edge. And I need to make this bolt, because this is what's going to fasten it down to the block. This bolt has to go in here, but this can't go through here. It's got to go through the top. So I need to cut this out, put a big freeze plug in it, then this bolt can drop down into there. Once that's done, then I can do some sanding, sanding, give it a good nice transition, make it look nice. Because if it looks good, it's gonna be good. There we go, there's the hard part done of putting doing the lump installation. So I got the pipe I got it tapped to accept the, uh, accept the pipe thread. This is a half inch pipe. So normally if I'm drilling a half inch pipe right there, it's going to need 45, 60 force. Well, it's too small. Reason being this, sh this shoulder on this bolt is a uh, three-quarter inch. Well, that doesn't quite fit in there for that size. So what I did is I drilled it 47 64ths right there. So three, uh, seven, three, four. And then I took my bolt and I turned this down to 720, I think. Yeah, I did 720, and I didn't mess with the shoulder diameter, so it's still going to be very secure. So I, I just turned this down to 720, 734, drill bit, half inch pipe thread. Just a little modification from the kit. I know how these kits go. They are not going to work for everyone. You kind of have to make them fit. So that's just what kind of what I had to deal with. So we're pretty much done with installing the lump kit. So I got the lump inside the intake, and I got my bolt, and then it's just going to drop right in. Sits right there. Once I'm done and I've got it tightened down, I'm going to trim this up a little bit to make sure we get a good flow with uh, some, you know, just round that off because that does throw air off a little bit. And then once it's all done, and you just put a little Teflon tape on this. It's the intake. It's not gonna. You probably wouldn't even need Teflon just for funsies, I guess. And then just put that on there, and it's gonna be all safe and secure. And then that that'll go right into the block. So lump kit's done. Now it's on to porting the head. So we're almost at the end of the day. Kind of the next step to this is uh, putting in a screw that holds the lump in and I didn't do a video I didn't really record that because I'm trying to figure it out myself so it would it be an hour long video but kind of just took my drill bit went in to the aluminum 
held it in place, used a punch, punched in the hole, and then that kind of gave me, made it so that the, the drill wouldn't walk around as I tried to go into aluminum. Drilled just a little bit into the aluminum, uh, into the head itself, took the lump out, drilled in, and then uh, threaded it. I, the first one I did, I thought I would just go kind of straight down into the head, but I might have to redo it because on these other ones I found it was better to kind of just go into the head bolt hole itself so the hole going through so I ended up drilling kind of in into that hole now I'll put a Teflon and it make sure it doesn't leak because this is a through bolt into the block into the coolant passages that's what I found better and then I made it very obvious this one's in the center this one's a little bit off to the right. I'm going to make this one, when I redo it, a little bit off to the left, just to make sure that you know which lump is which. Really easy to tell when I take it all back apart. So that's how I did that. And I've already kind of went one step ahead, and, and I drilled out all the uh, guide cores so that I can put in new guides. With this, it's going to be able to accommodate up to 600 thousandths lift, which is a lot. So the, the, with the seal on it, it's only going to be sticking up six, uh, three-eighths of an inch. But if you take a caliper and measure this... <clears throat> set up my head again uh, you know just just roughly it's um, 1316 so 812 and that'll kind of give you an idea of how much shorter it's going to be so we're going to be going from a half inch uh, from 1316 to a half inch sticking up out of the head that allows for a lot more lift which we will be doing to this engine we're going to be doing a stage two cam if i remember right it should be somewhere around 5 30 lift so i'll uh get this all figured out i've got lots of parts to figure out the distance of how far the guys are going to be sticking out for these seals to sit on there that way when the seals sit they they sit right there to give the maximum amount of the guide going down in to the head to make sure it holds that valve rigid and then this to give the clearance that way this doesn't sit to make sure that this stays on to the valve guide itself so lots to figure out that i'm going to be putting in part two i'm going to leave the lump as one part just my journey on getting that done and then part two will be doing the valve train itself. So that'll be up next. Thanks for watching. I'm learning a lot, so don't think I'm a professional. This is my first time doing it. I'm just kind of giving you my uh, ins and outs of doing it so far. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time as we do the valve train itself.